Hello and welcome to the Donahue Group. Uh, we're glad you're joining us for a half an hour of conversation on the topical issues of the day. We're four interested citizens uh, uh, living in Sheboygan County and uh, joining me today, Cal Potter, Tom Paneski, Ken Risto, and I'm the namesake of the group, Mary Lynn Donahue. And uh, we're uh, here on a wonderful, lovely summer afternoon and uh, just makes you want to play hooky. And so here we are, just taking time out from our regular jobs and talking about uh, some interesting uh, issues uh, on the local level. Uh, of course, cannot really go on without talking about the recall. Um, a, a citizens group has initiated a, a recall petition. And I don't believe, as of our last taping, that had actually been filed with the clerk's office, uh, if, if memory serves me correctly. It has been. It's my understanding that the group has until September 5th, if I'm not mistaken, to gather 4,000 plus, I think, 4,013 signatures. There was a recent change in the law that reduces the number of signatures that has to be obtained and also increases the length of time from 30 to 60, 60 days, days, which, which is, is quite a benefit to them. Well, is it? Um, well, doubling the time, previous uh, initiatives around the state have oftentimes failed because they couldn't get the percentage of the gubernatorial vote within that 30-day window. Right. Um, part of it, though, I would suggest, I don't know, that at a certain point people tend to run out of steam, that it becomes old news. I think that a recall tends to succeed where there's a flash issue and people are really steamed up and there's a, you know you have people who in a very short period of time have to accomplish a big task I'm just wondering I, I have no idea I mean it may be of great advantage to the recall group to have it go 60 days but if if you just kind of run out of steam and people just aren't so interested anymore I don't know um, that's possible the other possibility of course is they tried certain mechanisms to get signatures, and then they have also several weeks to regroup and decide a new strategy. Uh, That's true. As we tape this, there's an article in the, in the local paper, paper talking about a strategy to go door to door. Apparently, maybe it wasn't as extensively planned to do that. And so now they're looking at this as an option to get the signatures they supposedly need. Yeah, and, and, and it's interesting. Um, and it's also, I think, interesting how it's played out in the community. What is your your senses of what what are you hearing uh, most people I you know I know there's been real efforts on the part of some of the recall people to try to articulate what's the problem <laughs> and yet when I'm talking with folks you know at the Piggly Wiggly or wherever they don't really still have a sense of what is the the burning issue you know it was in the, in the mayor's race it was Sheridan Park or it's, you know, in some people's minds there was the issue of the police station. There's something that mm -hmm. when, they, when they look at the, the way the positions have been articulated so far in the, in the press or if one's listening to WHBL or whatever it might be, you know, um, I don't think people are walking away, especially maybe just because it's summer and everybody's busy, you know, on with their lives. They really don't know what this is about, you know. They get, and I think uh, I think uh, Mayor Perez has done a pretty good job, and as his supporters saying, "Look at the people who are running this. They all lost elections. You know, That's get right, over it. They did. Get you know, get, get over, over it. <laughs> let's let's move on. And there is, and, and and then you layer on top of that, of course, the the uh, racial charges and the stuff that was on the one on the one particular website. And I, I right now, I think uh, I think it's going to be very difficult for them to get the signatures. That's what I think. Uh, I don't hear much. I don't see much either. I mean, occasionally you drive by, you see a little sign, sign yeah. recall, uh, recall petition here, and yeah. the person sitting in a chair holding, you know, with a. Uh, occasionally, I hear that uh, you know city, some city officials are not officials, but some city employees off duty are trying are circulating petitions, and uh, some people take objection to that, but. Uh, the fact that today's uh, newspaper article says, you know, they're, they're going to go door to door uh, uh, and, and people are a little reluctant when they encounter them to, to sign a petition and not, you know, just means I think they're, they're, like you said, they're running out of steam and there is no well-defined, why, sh why should I sign the petition? Yeah. What's mm -hmm. the well-defined issue that I could have reason to sign the petition for? I think what's going to happen too is, is you know, a lot of people are saying if, 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 
if it's just all these sort of policy differences, this is why we have elections. And there will be an election coming up in a few years, and if we're unhappy, we can throw the guy mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And now I think what's going to happen, too, is as it's particulated that we're going to be spending a certain amount of money to, for, for a recall election, I think there's people are going to swing even more in that direction. Why are we spending this kind of money on an election that basically it's, it's, it's perceived as personality differences, not substantive mm -hmm. policy issues? And I don't think, mm -hmm. I, don't see the, I don't see it happening. Well, I think there's a difference between what the intended uh, reason for a recall is and what the statutes actually say. I remember in the mid-70s, we had an extensive debate in creating the statutes very much as the way they are today. Mm -hmm. And uh, the legislative debate at that time was whether we should put specific uh, crimes and, and uh, activities in the statutes as basis for the recall but the legislature being subject to recall, I think didn't want to paint themselves as being sort of uh, protecting their own hide in their own back. So they kept it rather nebulous and focused in on the process of getting the recall started and, and in place. And uh, so I think though in practice, many people have internalized, and I remember the debate at that time was, we can throw, there's justifi there are justifiable reasons to throw people out of office if they're in involved in well, breaking the law or embezzlement or whatever it happened to be, a moral uh, crime of some type. Uh, clearly, you want the bum out, but if you're talking about decisions, which are, wouldn't be a decision if there wasn't more, more than one point of view, which are commonly debated in the political arena, people expect debate. That's what politics is all about, and there are differences between liberals and conservatives, and we accept that. Um, and at, at what point do you enact then uh, or put in place the recall petition when indeed politics day to day is such a contentious arena? So I think there are people who are probably hashing over in their mind, again, the statutes allow us to do this, but what is the practical application and what was the real intent in placing in the statutes a recall statute? I think there's someone in place looking to run again <laughs> if they should get 4,013 signatures. So, you know, like you said, you got some people who are disgruntled because they lost. Well, the other day at breakfast, I saw a couple business folks sitting with uh, our former mayor uh, you know, down at breakfast. They came in together and I thought, oh, maybe they're talking about uh, will he run or not? Uh -huh. And I asked one of the businessmen afterwards, so I saw him a little later at another time, were you guys talking about the recall? And he said, yep, yep. <laughs> and one person thinks they're not going to get the 4,000 uh, 4, signatures, and the, another person thinks they will get it. So I don't yeah, know. It's, it's most interesting. I, um, mm -hmm. Just before the law was changed, they, the recall group would have needed about 6,000 signatures, which is about the number of people who voted for Mayor Schramm in the, the last election, I think. I may have that wrong, but in any event, uh, it, mm -hmm. is, it, is, it is pretty hard. So we can take an informal poll among ourselves, maybe a little pool, and you mm -hmm. know, just uh, throw in a penny each and, uh, yeah. and I, I don't know the if they're going to get, it, get them or not. You know, it isn't a lot when you can see if you really went door to door of all the voters to get that many <clears throat> signatures when people oftentimes are just ticked off at politicians in government. I mean, they may not like George Bush, they may not like the governor, they may not like whoever. And so when you, somebody comes to the door and says, I'd like you to cast a vote against the way things are going today, there are people who will sign just out of disgust about politicians. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you look at the positive rating of Congress, what is it, down to about 30%, Percent, something, something like of that, that yeah. nature? And Bush's yeah. numbers are so low, so, you know, I, so uh, I wouldn't doubt. Now. <laughs> <laughs> up, to, up, to, up, to, up to 40. Up to 40, yeah. Up to 40. I was always 33, I, I don't and I was one it. of the 33, but now I'm one of the 40. Okay. So it will be I don't indeed, believe it for a second. It'll be indeed interesting <laughs> to see how much frustration on government comes in that and how many an people point. really look yeah. at this and say this is not a, sort of an impeachable offense by anybody. Yeah. We shouldn't proceed. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's how most people perceive it. They may not use language like that, but you have mm -hmm. to have a very, very good reason to throw somebody out before yeah. their term of office. And I don't think the, those folks have made that case. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that um, uh, there was an, an article in the Sheboygan Press a couple of weeks back at the time of this taping where Barb tried, Barb Tashinsky tried to lay that case out. And, and I think it was, I think, you know, 
I just didn't think the case was made for most people that's going to persuade them to do that. Mm -hmm. So they might get the, they might get the signatures. But I, th I will tell you, I think, that if this plays out as a Shram Perez rerun, then people are going to say, they're going to, then it's going to, it's going to be a backlash and Perez is going to win big. Because if, if, it's just, just, if we're just having an election and spending X number of dollars to do a rerun, if that's the best the opponents can do, that's, Juan's going to end up with a mandate, which is, you know, it's going to play out in a way that they don't really, they're going to rue the day that they went down this road. Although elections are very expensive and yeah. time consuming yes. and distracting from, you know, you have four, four years in office and if you're spending three or four or five or six months in your second year rerunning, it's, I think it's, mm -hmm. it's, it can be pretty tough. So it, it will be interesting to, to, um, to see how it plays out. But, um, and the effect on the community if it does play yeah. out. I had a gentleman call me who was in favor of the recall, and he just wanted to know my take on it. Just, oh, okay. and, I, and I said, I said, I can tell you one thing, that this is not going to be a positive uh, creation of a positive arena in which city business ought to be done or, or will be done. Mm -hmm. Because not only is it now you're going to have the expansion, the contention of another election, then you've got whoever loses is probably still going to be ticked off, and you've just got <coughs> kind of replaying this thing over and over. Who doesn't like who for what reason? And in the meantime, months are passing when the city ought to be attending to a new police station or whatever it mm -hmm. happens to be. So I, I, I said I didn't think that anything was going to be emotionally or, or image-wise gained by this no matter who wins out because it's just not a, a positive going forward with the business of doing the people's work. And there's certain things that just aren't going to change. I can see why city employees are unhappy. Um, things don't look good, uh, and I don't think that's the mayor's fault, but no matter who is in office, there simply is just not going to be the money available to do the things that city employees would like to see in terms of wage and benefit increases. I mean, it's just not going to happen, at least if it does happen, there are going to be changes in other places, whether there are layoffs or wherever their can, money can be found. It is not a happy day to be a, a city employee. Uh, and it just isn't. It, I mean, from, from what I can see, it doesn't make any difference if it's the mayor, if it's Mayor Perez, if it's Mayor Schramm, or whoever might be out there running. Um, there's not a lot of money, unless there is... Uh, unless there is a pitch to raise taxes to, to, to cover benefits and so forth. I think, I think the, the pie is, is pretty stable. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, people I are might, frustrated. I might, not, but I might not say that it's, not, it's a, not a happy day. I wouldn't say it's not a happy day to be a city employee. I think they get paid reasonably well, and they have good benefits. Oh, so, they do. <laughs> so I think it's, you know, they got pretty, yeah. pretty secure in their position. And they got got work good, pretty good work conditions. So yeah, they, it's just that the rays won't be there. That's right, it. exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. But I mean, that's the source of the unhappiness, and there is no money to do it with. And it doesn't make any difference who your mayor is or who your city council is. It makes a difference who your state legislat legislators are, because I think so much of the money comes of our funds. Forty percent of our city funds come from the state, unless there is a mood to raise taxes. And I think the referenda that we saw in April were a resounding uh, decision from, from voters to say, no, we don't want to pay any more taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's for really good causes, we just don't want to do it anymore. So, well, enough said on the recall. Um, the saga now um, has gone past, gone with the wind, and is now reaching the epic proportions of war and peace the police station. <laughs> I the have saga, no clue where it is. <laughs> the yeah, saga <laughs> continues. Well, Gone with the Wind is about 700 pages, and War and Peace is about 900, 900 pages. pages. <laughs> so where I think, kind of, yeah. depending on how tiny the print okay, is, we're about there. Um, huh? I'm amazed uh, the 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 back and forth um, uh, uh, on the North 23rd Street site on the Vandervart site. Um, what are your thoughts? I just don't, it doesn't appear that there's much forward movement, unless I'm missing that. Isn't it settled? It's the 23rd Street site? I, I didn't think, why are we even discussing the Vanderbilt site? I thought it was settled. It's just how much you're going to pay the county. 
Well, and well, and how could, big it's going to be. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, and how big. Yeah, okay, and whether it's going to be a 7 or 11 or 15 or, or yeah. <laughs> million dollar facility. Oh, I don't think that North 23rd Street site is settled by any means. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I'm, it depends on, I mean, the, the city made an offer to the county that isn't as good as the offer was, you know, a couple years back. I, and I have no idea what the county reaction is going to be, if there's going to be a counter offer. Um, and all of a sudden, there does seem to be some energy for the Vandervart property. Well, and, Van and Vandervart's changed their position as well. Huge. So you've got a Huge. you've got a, a constantly moving target here. You've got the county changing the numbers and, and their perspective, and then you have you've got that little game going on, and then you've got uh, Vandervart saying, "Well, maybe we won't we won't." Originally, they said they had to, <coughs> the city had to buy the whole lot or right. the whole site or whatever and now they're hinting around that perhaps there might be some room to negotiate there so you've got that changing the numbers and then you've got this notion of well this is what kind of police yeah. department we want but then that's way over budget so now we're trying to reduce the square footage to, and oh, and so you you really have all these variables flying around so it's very difficult in that kind of environment to to make an informed and, and, and an, an important decision and I don't. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not envious of the Common <laughs> Council. And like as we said the last episode, you know, we've got different council members who've got some different perspectives as well, and those have to be heard. They've just been recently elected, so. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, again, geez. there's no money. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> uh, we're talking about very finite financial resources, and the city is very near. It's a self-imposed budget or debt limit, rather. But nonetheless, we're just bouncing right up on the top of it, and um, I, I don't know um, when and how and if, and uh, it's just very interesting to me. Uh, has there ever been a building project like this in the city that has, I don't see it, in, or I can't think in my memory, that has generated this much controversy? And don't, I mean, I was on the council when they were planning to build the Mead Public Library. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. And it was a big cost initially, and but they it wasn't there wasn't a question about the site, mm -hmm. and uh, they were able to pare the cost down. Uh, I don't know, from five or from seven million to something like four million. Okay. And then they built it. But I, but the site, I guess, was fairly much uh, already selected. Mm -hmm. yeah, about the only cost. discussion I recall, Tom, was you know, why are we taking a piece of prime commercial real estate and yeah. taking it off the yeah. tax rolls? But we're, you know, obviously you want a library that's somewhat centrally located for the citizens, so where, where would it have gone? Where know? would it have gone? Well, the one thing it would appear is that the city hall site for the police station is probably a dead letter. And yeah. I, from my perspective, I think that's, a good thing. Right. Uh, it, maybe I just wasn't understanding where it was going to fit, but my goodness, that just is a tiny little site, and I just didn't quite see mm. how that how that would work out. So, I think the 23rd Street site. If I think the police can play a leadership role a role in this by realizing that the taxpayers are just going to pay so much for a police station and that the Cadillac is not going to be purchased and that they ought to design it and build it with expansion in mind. If maybe they need an additional garage space some days for mechanics or whatever, at least that will be a facility that won't be as expensive, but you can get the square footage up later on. So, you know, you can kind of finesse this. I think it's about the time when everybody should be getting together to start talking about that. Maybe the taxpayers will buy 11 million mm -hmm. or 7 million or whatever it happens to be. And it may not meet the police needs, mm -hmm. uh, and not yeah. what they deserve and not what they need, but uh, build on at a time when maybe things are a little uh, cooler, I guess, in, in the political yeah. arena. Well, I'm sure we'll be sitting here with the Christmas tree in the corner. Corner. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and having moved beyond war and peace. And, uh, well, do we have the option what the school system did? Go to a referendum? and authorize the bonding issue like the school did for the sure. building of the two yeah, Absolutely, That's an option the city has? From my perspective, that's a terrific idea because it is a major capital investment. I do think we tend to overuse referenda mm -hmm. um, and uh, people are elected to make hard decisions and I don't <coughs> think we should necessarily take that away. But when something really seems to have grabbed the attention of the public, well, we talked about this with the nursing homes. Um, I mean, clearly it's a very big emotional issue for residents of the county as to whether we should operate nursing homes. Well, I think it's kind of an emotional or 
it's a big decision, if not emotional. It's a matter of great concern to citizens. Um, I think, as I've always said, nearly everybody that I talk to, myself included, thinks we need a new police station. Uh, uh, the location now is, is antiquated. Um, but how much do you want to spend? Mm -hmm. And I think that there have been three levels put out, and why not put it to a vote mm -hmm. and put it on the November ballot? Then it's a clear direction to the council. Bonding can go ahead, and because it's going to have to anyway, I think, mm -hmm. and, and, and then the issue gets, gets resolved. It's a thought, but I'm sure we'll have many more opportunities to talk, talk about, about this that. as okay. time goes well, on. Well, they don't have the options the county has. You know, the county nursing home was clearly <clears throat> people didn't want to raise their taxes for oh, it, yeah, that's but right. they're in support of nursing homes. So what the county's doing is sort of looking at the middle ground. Are there any buyers for these facilities? And it seems there are. It's a very entrepreneurial approach. Yeah. And I think there's nothing wrong with grafting entrepreneurial concepts into government. It's never a perfect match. And there are a lot of differences. You know, some private business people think, well, if we just ran government like private business, it'd be just fine. Well, no. I, I mean, there, there are certainly different, there are different structures, different sources of money, and, 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 and so forth. But there's nothing wrong with an entrepreneurial spirit. And I think the county has been showing that with the nursing mm -hmm. homes. And, um, and you just hope that whoever buys continues to pay decent wages and benefits to right. its workers, because I think that's pretty important. Um, yeah, that's what exactly won't happen, will not happen. Yeah, it almost can't. Because you know, there was a couple, I think the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel was yesterday, or was it, uh, I'm sorry, on Sunday, was talking about a study that was done saying that private uh, health care facilities for the elderly don't provide the, the care that publicly funded ones do. So I'm a more pessimistic. I'm hoping, I'm hoping too, but typically what happens is that people that come in will <laughs> normally uh, break the union and, or they'll fire everybody and make everybody reapply and they'll be paid far less than what they're being paid right now. Yeah. And that's how you make money. Yeah. That's how you make these things work. I mean, that's, that's the pattern in privatization where, where counties in the south, in the south especially, have turned over facilities, prisons, Mm -hmm. and a variety of other public institutions. And when they've done the studies, the cost savings come at, by ratcheting down the wages and benefits of the employees. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, as we did at the district when we got rid of a large number of custodians, and now we have what are we call contract cleaners. Mm -hmm. And they're working at minimum wage, they're entry-level jobs, uh, they're mostly folks that uh, many of them don't speak English. Uh -huh. uh, the ones that clean my room, classroom at South, certainly uh, mm -hmm. don't speak English. Um, and they do okay work, occasionally you get some who really do really, really well, and then there's some who really don't do badly. But if you look at the cleanliness of the schools, they're not what they used to be. No. They don't have the ownership <coughs> to somebody who... And there's a lot of rotation, and there's a lot of turnover yeah. in, those, in those staff. Yeah. But, you know, we saved money at one level, but on another level, we we're... You sacrificed. Yeah, you know, I got dust bunnies in the corner of my classroom the size of Idaho. Well, you know, that's just... I wouldn't have seen that when I began my teaching career, and... George Christus, God, you know, he's somewhere out there in our listening audience. George Christus cleaned my room. He did him, and it was a good, that room was clean. Mm -hmm. He took pride in that because that was his school. Bring your own vacuum cleaner. Yeah. yeah. Well, in any event. <laughs> Maybe we go back to the 1880s and I can haul buckets of charcoal in too yeah. to keep the heat yeah. going in exactly. the stove. Exactly. We only have a couple minutes left before we <laughs> change the light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> But this interesting philosophical discussion on, on privatization. You clean your office lately, Mary Lynn? I do. Yeah, there, I do we really. actually have a little handheld fact because, <laughs> really? our, because our cleaning folks don't get under the desk and you know the things that get under the, um, the mats. And I could go on, but I shan't. We'll, we'll go on and talk about local elections because we just have a couple of minutes. Um, not a whole lot of great energy and interest in, in um, uh, locally. Um, uh, Van Akron versus Jose, and uh, Aulick versus Leibham. Um, Terry Van Akron is being challenged by Job Jose, uh, the bishop's son, uh, a smart guy. Um, what do you think? He was in the parade, the 4th of July parade. I always look to see whose entourage looks better. Or, <laughs> and uh, Job, uh, Mr. Jose, had obviously put some time and effort into his entourage in the, in the parade. Um, it's pretty early. I had, I mean, he was a student of mine. Yeah, I had him too. And you had him too. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a good, good kid. Yeah. He, he does reflect a little bit of his father's. Uh, uh, yeah. Ex, he's an eccentric a little bit. Sure. Um, and it was a long time ago. 
Yeah. You know, people mature, they grow up and they mature. I know that Joe felt uh, when I had him that uh, the machines that we cast our ballots on, the mechanical machines in those days were, were manipulated and rigged to get the outcomes that, that certainly his father didn't like to see. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he was young, and, and, and we'll see. Uh, it is kind of interesting seeing Lime and Jose signs together on lawns. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, if you'd have told me three years ago yeah, I'd have seen that, that, I would have yeah, said, oh, yeah. really, that's really kind of interesting. So I don't know if they're running as a ticket, but... Um, yeah. Well, I and, doubt it. And the yeah, I doubt it too. But is he, the, is he a registered Republican? Oh yes. Is, is I didn't know. Okay. I yes. just thought he was running. So okay. there's no primary at this point. No, I, no. I believe I believe he's running as a Republican, as a Republican. and he's ex, a, a very conservative Republican, um, cherishing all those Republican values that that Tom is here to talk about, and <laughs> that uh, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, I, it is my understanding he's running that as a he's okay. a okay. Con conservative. Uh, you know, pro-life, um, um, just very, very conservative. Van Akron um, probably doesn't have too much to worry about. I don't think so. It's yeah. a good name politically yeah. good in, name. in the yeah. town. Yeah. It's also, uh, uh, he's not uh, perceived as a flaming liberal Democrat. I mean, well, he's you look, not. Yeah. And so, uh, so where's, where Changes is he going to? Changes his vote a lot, though. Where is he going to be uh, <laughs> vulnerable, I guess? This is on your carry conceal <laughs> foolishness. <laughs> I guess I was a little out there on that. Um, I think you're right. And Alec versus Liveham, of course, it's the sign wars have started. Um, Joe's got some big signs up, you hmm. know, with plastic pipes, and uh, I understand he's doing doors. Uh, he knocked That's down my good brother's door. and uh, knocked so down a colleague's of mine door, of mine's door yesterday. So he's working hard. He's also taking his morning jogs to uh, drop off campaign literature, too. A friend of mine who was, uh, saw Joe, Joe running, and oh. uh, fig literally running, and then leaving campaign literature as well, he's running down Mill Road. And so, so Joe's running in both senses. <laughs> Well, I think, though, when you stop like that, your aerobic, um, yeah, it, it not impairs the, the aerobic. Uh, but he's been around. I mean, I saw, I saw him out at the uh, Plymouth 4th of July. Well, it wasn't 4th of July, but the Plymouth fireworks, which were several days later. I saw him there and uh, well, ran to him at Heritage. I, where else? I saw him someplace else. I thought he was kind of tracker. I thought he was maybe stalking me for a minute. Yeah. Well, we're, we're going to end on that happy note, but uh, <laughs> we'll, have, uh, we'll have more time to talk about it. Thanks. It's been enjoyable. Thank you.